Harry Harry, the hermit of Hambrook, lived alone at the top of a tree. As he gazed from his lofty outlook, he could see all the ships on the sea. One evening, scanning the skyline, some strange sails he did spy. He knew not the colours they sported, and wondered what they could be like. He had heard of King Philip of Spain and Medina Sidonia, too, his ships being the skirts of the main. Harry wondered, what should I do? He readied himself for action, donned his finest doublet and hose. I think there might be an invasion. He adopted his most fearsome pose. Then he remembered the beacon, that tower that stood by the shore. It could be seen from the farthest horizon, so he hurried with news that he bore. He took up two sticks of driftwood. He rubbed them together in haste. No spark arose in the damp wood. My efforts have all gone to waste. He wrung his hands and he tore at his hair. His dread distress was plain in this plight. Then a boy scout came wandering near. Here's my Zippo. I see you need a light. Meanwhile, Sir Francis played with his balls. On the hoe, well, that's what they say. The beacons are lit, cried the squire. The armada approaches. You must come while you may. Bollocks, said Drake. I'll finish my game. The Spaniards can wait until dawn. Now please fetch me another quarter the same. So he slept till the very next morn. The day being clear, of the clock being nine, Sir Francis arose from his bed. He stumbled on board his ship of the line, forgetting what his servant had said. The squire came behind and repeated his message. There must be no time to lose. The Spaniards are coming to rape and to pillage, and to drink up all of our booze. They'll never drink old England dry, said Drake as he quaffed from his flask. Anchors away and colours let fly, cried Sir Francis as he rejoiced at the task. On a westerly breeze the fleet rose the waves. They could be seen from the Spingenka Tower. We'll send them to their watery graves, Drake's countenance, defiant and sour. Harry Harry stood on bosom hard to watch as the ships sailed by. The Amada's masts and topsail yards, silhouettes against a pale blue sky. Behind them came the English fleet. Harry did wave and loud cheer Ed. God bless you, bold Sir Francis. English ships will be the most feared. But... The English fleet was outnumbered by a hundred galleons or more. Drake, he was not confounded. I have a confident plan, he swore. That evening, the Armada hove to off Calais to take on fresh supplies. Maintenant, nous les aurons, Sir Francis, à parler. His French caused some great surprise. A fire ship was in Drake's mind, the enemy too amazed, so he selected a battered old frigate to create a terrible blaze. That ship, beyond its sell-by date, was filled with stuff for to burn. The person asked, Who's got a light? Use my zippo, said Sir Francis. Then our pay we'll earn. The frigate was a floating inferno, which Drake sent amidst the armada. There were shouts of fear, alas, and woe, as Spaniards prayed to Heavenly Father. Thus, Drake singed the King of Spain's beard, for which he is renowned. The crews they shouted and loud cheered, rejoicing, at least we've not been grounded. All Harry knew of this, as he gazed from his treetop dwelling, was a reddening of the night-time sky. Was that smoke he was smelling? Harry went walking the very next morning, on the beach, it was just before dawn. What should he hear? Was it a warning? Someone was blowing the horn. Peering out to see, Harry got a surprise. There was Sir Francis who stood in a longboat. Harry knew it was him by his size, his medals, and the elegant cut of his coat. Harry knelt on the beach in obeisance. He prostrated as Drake strode the tide. Arise, said Sir Francis with deference. Stand now and greet me with pride. Twas you, Harry, that raised the alarm. The crown must give thee reward. Twas you that saved our nation from harm. I am commanded to gift you this sword. 
Harry bowed, and went on to say, Kind sir, I am no fighter. Very well, said Drake. Now for your pay, you shall have my Zippo lighter. <laughs>